He continues to be a respected worker in many parts of the world. In general appearance, the Border Terrier is an active working terrier of medium bone, strongly put together, and suggesting endurance and agility. He has a distinctive otter head and is of a size to be able to go to ground and to follow a horse during a day's hunting over varied terrain. The body is covered with a somewhat broken, though close-fitting, and intensely wiry jacket. Dogs weigh between 13 and 15 and a half pounds. Bitches between 11 and a half and 14 pounds, in hard working condition. Although the standard contains no height specification, traditionally the guide of an inch of height per pound of weight reflects an appropriate proportion for a dog in hard working condition. In proportion, the height at the withers should be slightly greater than the distance from withers to tail. In a 14 pound dog, the difference is possibly one to one and a half inches. Both dogs and bitches are of medium bone and strongly put together but are rather narrow in shoulder, body, and quarter, in order that they may go to ground in pursuit of their quarry. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Border Terrier with this distinctive head. It resembles an otter's head, that is, moderate in size, fairly broad, but not coarse in skull. In profile, the skull is moderately broad and flat, while the stop is a slight, moderately broad curve, rather than a pronounced indentation. The muzzle is short and well-filled, never snipey. The ideal comparative lengths are one-third nose to stop and two-thirds stop to occiput. Seen from the front, there is plenty of width to the skull between the ears and between the eyes. The cheeks are slightly full. The nose is black and of good size. Teeth are large in proportion to the size of the dog, strong, and meet in a scissor's bite. Undershot or overshot bites are very undesirable, as bite faults seriously affect the terrier's ability to work. 
What about this dog's head? The muzzle is long and narrow, lacking the necessary strength. This head is correct, with a flat, broad skull and a stop defined by a moderate curve rather than a pronounced indentation. The muzzle is well filled and is dark, which is a desirable breed characteristic. Note the ideal proportions of length, one-third nose to stop, two-thirds stop to occiput. A few short whiskers are natural. The Border Terrier's eyes are dark hazel in color and are full of fire and intelligence. They are moderate in size, neither prominent nor small and beady, and are set well apart. These light-colored eyes are not preferred. Ears are small, V-shaped, and of moderate thickness. They're set somewhat on the sides of the head rather than high and drop forward close to the cheeks. They should not break above the level of the skull. A dark color is preferred. These large heavy ears which break too high are not correct. These flyaway ears which do not drop close to the cheeks are undesirable. These correct eyes and ears add to the border's typical expression. Now let's consider the border terrier's neck and body. The neck is clean, muscular, strong enough to draw its quarry, and only long enough to give a well-balanced appearance. It widens gradually into the shoulders, which are well laid back and of good length. The blades converge gradually to the withers, and the brisket is not excessively deep or narrow. To achieve good length of stride, the shoulder and upper arm should be approximately the same length and meet at nearly a right angle. The forelegs are straight and not too heavy in bone. They are set rather far back, making the forechest somewhat prominent. Seen from the front, the forelegs are set slightly wider apart than the fox terrier, with the same distance between them at the feet as at the elbows. They are straight, not out at the elbows or tied in under the body. Note again the clean look of the shoulders. There should be no suggestion of coarseness or heaviness. The space between the legs is not excessively broad, measuring as a rough guide about four fingers width. This dog is straight in shoulder and the upper arm appears too short. These faults will inhibit proper reach in front. The front feet are small and compact. The toes should point forward and be moderately arched with thick pads. The Border Terrier's body is deep, fairly narrow, and of sufficient length to avoid any suggestion of lack of range and agility. The term deep, used to describe the body, should not be taken to mean a deep brisket. However, the brisket reaches to the elbow. The top line is strong and supple, with no hint of a dip behind the withers. The border's body is rangy and narrow in shoulder and loin, with little tuck-up. The underline is fairly straight, the loin is strong, and the ribs extend well back and should not be oversprung nor slab-sided. Here, the underline appears to have too much tuck-up. The phrase, spanned by a man's hands, comes from the huntsman's way of measuring. The object is to estimate whether a dog has the narrowness to get into a foxhole. Oversprung ribs are not correct for the border terrier. 
Seen from above, the rib cage should not be wider than the shoulders. This dog's narrow, rangy body is correct, with a strong back and loin, and only moderately sprung ribs. The tail is moderately short, thick at the base, and tapering to a point. It's not set on too high, and is carried gaily when at the alert, although never over the back. Note that when at ease, boarders may drop their tails. There is often a distinct ring of different color about midpoint on the tail. This is typical. Hindquarters are muscular and racy. Thighs are long and nicely molded. Stifles are well bent and the hocks are well let down. The angulation of the hindquarters should match that of the forequarters preserving the breed's balanced, agile appearance. This dog's incorrect top line is roached with a steep croup and the stifles lack angulation. From the rear, the muscling of the hindquarters should be evident. Hocks should be parallel, turning neither in nor out. Rear feet, like the front feet, are small and compact, with toes pointing straight forward, with a moderate arch and thick pads. The Border Terrier's coat consists of a short, dense undercoat and a very wiry and somewhat broken top coat. The coat lies closely to the body, but should not show any tendency to curl or wave. It should feel hard and wiry to the touch. Note that a proper coat means a border should be shown in a natural state. Any trimming of a coat, such that the border resembles the more trimmed breeds, is unacceptable. Excessive facial furnishings are also undesirable. Coat length varies from dog to dog, but there should be enough to be able to determine that the coat is indeed a double one. Texture is more important than length. A lack of undercoat or a soft, fluffy coat is not desirable. The border is the only terrier who must have a thick and loose-fitting skin or hide. This is crucial because it protects the dog from injury inflicted by his quarry, other dogs, or underbrush. A judge should not hesitate to grasp a handful of skin in back of the shoulder without pinching and lift it. This does not hurt the dog. In fact, borders are quite used to it. A thin, tight skin is a fault. As for color, the Border Terrier may be red, grizzle and tan, blue and tan, or wheaten. No color is to be given preference. A small amount of white on the chest is allowed, but white on the feet should be penalized. Note again the preferred dark muzzle. The Border Terrier's gait should be straight and rhythmical both in front and behind, with good length of stride and flexing of stifle and hock. The back remains strong. This economical, free movement allows the border to follow horse and hound all day. Coming toward you, the forelegs should be carried straight forward, not thrown out to the side. And going away, the rear legs should follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. The hocks remain parallel.
Here is correct movement. Free, agile, and quick. With good reach in front and drive from behind. The dog should respond to his handler with a gait which is free, agile, and quick. The border is shown best on a loose lead. Thank you.